welcome to Postcards and Australia's Northwest. I'm here at Middle Spring in Kununurra, just one of many dramatic waterfalls in the area. Let's take a look at what else is coming up on the show. Tonight on Postcards, Pip looks for luxury far away in broom time at Eco Beach. I drift through a natural wonder in the Rolly Shoals. Matt follows the Dreamtime Serpent's path along the Walu Way and Pip goes shopping for the perfect high fashion accessory. If you're in search of an eat, pray, love experience, this is the place to find it. Eco Beach Wilderness Retreat is about an hour's drive south of Broome. This is a place for exclusive seclusion. You choose your luxury level, there's the Eco Villas, or how's this for a fancy tent, complete with ensuite? And the stunning beach houses, fabulously decorated, and from every room, even the shower, uninterrupted views of the ocean. The resort is designed for you to connect with the wilderness and centre yourself. This is the stunning yoga studio, a place where you can stretch out your tensions and meditate, surrounded by an ocean of calming blue water. Hello, hello. Hi, Pip. Welcome to Ego Beach. Oh, it's absolutely beautiful. You've got a quite magnificent place here. It is a lovely spot, isn't it? Hearing the story, it's got a lot in common with the Phoenix, this resort. Explain to us why that is. Oh, look, ten years ago, uh, the largest cyclone ever across the Australian coast went straight over the top of us and basically picked the whole resort up and blew it out in the ocean, about a kilometre out in the ocean. So what was your vision when you, when you rebuilt this place? Well, I, I think it's to... Um, to take everybody back to nature like we always were and to, to give everybody those opportunities to, uh, to be in the middle of nowhere and they can choose to have a cocktail at the bar or walk the 10 kilometres of beach or, or wake up in the morning and do yoga or read a book, whichever you wish. Eco Beach Wilderness Retreat is run on solar power and all wastewater is recycled, reducing the impact on the environment. That's one of the reasons the retreat was awarded not one but four medals from the Tourism Council of WA. I'm with head chef of Jack's Bar and Grill, Kenneth Clapham. And Kenneth, you've got an amazing garden. Uh, at the moment, we're probably growing about 30% of our produce with tomatoes, pawpaw, broccoli, pumpkin. Um, and today, with our barrow wings, we're going to go with a papaya, green papaya salad. Yum! Um, this will be the main ingredient. <gasps> Can't wait to try it. Eco Beach is a giant water playground. The onshore winds are perfect for kite surfing. And you can explore the coast in a kayak. But I'm joining in a rather unusual spa treatment. This is called mud and bubbles. After cooling off in the ocean, we exfoliate our skin with sand, then rinse off. Now we're ready to smear fresh mud from the nearby creek all over our bodies. And I mean everywhere. Oh, and you can't forget the bubbles. After my mud bath, I've had a shower, I feel completely refreshed and ready for lunch. And here we have our barramundi wings on green papaya chips with fresh papaya relish. Fresh from the garden. Thanks, Kenneth. Just quietly, between you and me, I had to be dragged into the plane home. Up next on WA's favourite travel show, I plunge into the northwest sparkling waters and Matt begins his journey from Coral Bay to Broome. At Mermaid Reef, there's a current that runs at about four knots at the start of an incoming spring tide. Today, that happens to be very early in the morning, but we're all geared up for what I'm told is going to be an underwater roller coaster ride. 
The danger is that with such a strong current running, you might lose track of your dive buddies. So I never managed to find the camera crew, but I heard they had lots of fun. But losing yourself is the whole point because there is no way you will have any control over where you end up. Don't worry all you non-scuba divers because the crew will drop snorkelers into the channel too for their very own version of the drift dive and it's just as much fun. It seems to me life on board the Great Escape is thrill seekers heaven. It's not all about what's below the surface of the water. Sometimes you just have to throw your gear in a tub and find another way around the shoals. Even the most well-travelled diver rates this place highly. Yeah, I've done quite a few dives around Australia, um, the Barrier Reef and Ningaloo Reef, some really beautiful places. Um, but I'd, I'd say Rolly Shoals, if I had to pick a favourite, um, hop out on a limb and say this is my favourite, really. Look, the coral is beautiful, the drift dives are really exciting, the marine life, you know, there's lots of sharkies, which is always fun. They don't seem to breed non-serious sharks, they just seem to breed the serious ones down here. But maybe my favourite thing is just the isolation of the place, the fact that we're, I think it's 350 k's we are offshore, Something I think. Like yeah, and it's, um, it really feels like that, you know, you really feel like you're a long way out in the ocean and uh, it has a special kind of feel, a little bit of magic, I suppose. There are many drives that you can undertake across our massive state, but one of the most unforgettable is the Walu Way. In many ways, it's a spiritual journey that follows the Dreamtime's Walu Sea Serpent's path from the dazzling waters of Coral Bay through the Pilbara's dramatic landscapes and ending in the iconic town of Broome. Onslow may be a diversion off the Serpent's main path, but it's an important one. With great weather all year round and an opportunity to enjoy both the sunrise and sunset over water, why wouldn't you stop in for a couple of nights? Another would be to visit the Mackerel Islands. Sitting at the northern end of the Exmouth Peninsula, it's part of the Ningaloo ecosystem and as such has many spectacular natural attractions. If you travel inland from Onslow along Walu Way, you will come across another world-class Pilbara destination. Carved out of the red earth over two billion years, nature has created Karajini, the northwest version of a water theme park. But man can't recreate this. Deep gorges, cool water holes and refreshing waterfalls. Perfection. Heading back towards the coast, you'll pass through the Millstream and Chichester Twin National Parks. The contrasts of the incredibly dramatic Chichester ranges and the lush spring-fed Millstream waterways provide more to the adventurous types than most outback safaris. But the coast again is offering even more Walu Way treats. Located off the coast of Dampier is the stunning Dampier Archipelago. It's a collection of 42 pristine islands and today we'll discover that each has its own special story. And I reckon the only way to explore the islands is on board Discovery Sailing Adventure's twin mastered catch, the Spinifex Spray. First stop is the mysterious Sam's Island, just off the coast from the Dampier port. So here's his harbour, Matt, he developed that. Uh, all the rocks out of there were pulled out of there and used in the castle here. Yeah, as you can see, you can still see some coral rocks in here as well as the land rocks from the island. So that uh, bell there, Matt, people used yeah. to come off their boats, give that a ring, and Sam would come out and uh, greet them to his island. People used to call him a hermit. He was so far removed from the hermit, it was unbelievable. Yeah. In fact, he was probably visited more than the Queen was out here. <laughs> With 150 beaches scattered in and around the archipelago, it's a job in itself just knowing where to find the best spots. Not a lot of people know about the 42 beautiful islands we yeah. have here. And I guess in itself, that's, uh, that's a speciality. It's remote and the biggest boat population in Australia is here. Yet if everybody goes out on the weekend, you won't find them because there's so many islands we've got and yeah, so right. many beautiful beaches. Right. They come out here and they find out they're the only person on the beach. And we have two boats on a beach that's 80 metres long, we feel yeah. it's crowded up here. 
The area is better known for its natural resources, but surprisingly, it has a rich history. So as you can see, Matt, this is William Dampier's monument. He was here in 1699. So he came here looking for food, wood and water. He found it pretty difficult, as you can imagine, <laughs> especially he was here in September as well. He parked his big boat, Roebuck, out and rowed the boats in here, found some brackish water and moved on to Timor. That's why we call Dampier's Archipelago, because yeah, right, right. of his landing. And if you look behind me up on the hill there, you'll notice there's a face. Yeah. Looks like it's carved in the side of the hill, but it's not yeah. really. It's uh, not. a phenomenon. But it does look a little bit like William Dampier. Well, his nose anyway. Brad and Discovery Sailing Adventures will help you find your spirit of adventure on the Pilbara coastline. You just need to take that first step. After the break, Pip discovers the magic of nature's marine bounty. Today I'm following the journey that the lustrous accessory the pearl makes from the ocean to the jewellers. It's no wonder Broome's beautiful turquoise waters produce one of the world's most prized gems, the pearl. The town of Broome was cultured by the demand for this lustrous shell, which was once used to make buttons. Pearling in Western Australia is worth more than $150 million a year and you can see exactly how the industry works at the Willie Creek Pearl Farm. Willie Creek was set up to promote and also to uh, educate people about the pearling industry in WA. Broome was built on the back of the pearling industry and uh, whilst it's, ch it's changed a lot today to, to where we are with the cultured pearl, uh, it still plays a really significant part in Broome's history and culture. Willie Creek adds meaning to the phrase, the full tour. It starts with a captivating information session and you'll notice all the guides have a great sense of humour. 80% of all the horses is male and only 20% is female. It's not a lot of fun, is it, fellas? So what the guys do, 40% of all the guys change their sex. Then it's on to the water for a gorgeous tour of Willy Creek and the surrounding mangroves. So Willy Creek was the last licence in Australia to be handed out by the, the fisheries to farm pearls. We have a licence to farm 2,000 cashew pearls. So two years the oysters are sitting out here. Now this is our panel. This is a great photo opportunity. I'm going to get in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, man. And if the boat tour didn't satisfy your hunger for pearling knowledge, it really only serves as an entree to the main event. It'll cost you extra, but if you game, this is the best way to get a full 360 degree view of Willy Creek. The seascape surrounding Willy Creek changes constantly as often as the ebb and flow of Broome's daily tides. A place to discover the pearling past is here at Pearl Luggers in the heart of Chinatown. Life for the early pearl divers pit was a very dangerous pursuit. Uh, there were many contributing factors to it and that was a uh, natural factors, the sharks, we don't need to say why. Uh, the whales were a big threat because hooking onto the lines and uh, getting caught up, but also as they were going deeper looking for uh, the oysters and the shell, the hard hat diving suit uh, came into fruition and that introduced the threat of decompression illness and uh, they didn't fully understand the risks involved with decompression and so a lot of people perished while they developed uh, their working knowledge. There are daily tours at Pearl Luggers that start from 9 in the morning and run every two hours. 
This suit here was worn by the Japanese, and they were diving down to depths of in excess of 80 meters, or 40 fathoms. Now, each one of these boots, uh, one size fits all, and they weigh 15 kilos each. They also offer sightseeing tours around Broome. And if you want to take home a souvenir, there's a showroom. How's this for a not-so-little gem? In my hand is a pearl worth $100,000. And if you're in the mood for some high-end retail therapy, next door to Pearl Luggers, you'll find the Autore store. It has a stunning collection of pearl-infused jewellery. If you're going to buy pearls when you're in Broome, this is the man you should meet, Mr Bill Reid. Co-founded the international Linnies brand and helped to revolutionise Australia's pearling industry. Tip the three things to look for when you're buying a pearl is lustre, lustre, lustre. Shape and colour are subjective factors. So don't buy anything too small, otherwise you'll grow out of it and you'll have to...